In this second part of part three video tutorial, we're going to continue building out our homepage. And today we're going to focus on building out the top navigation and the bottom footer. If you missed the previous video, please check it out in the description below. But in the last video, we finished by implementing our block renderer on our page.tsx file. But today we're going to jump in and work on our top navigation and footer. And as always, you could reference the blog post to accommodate this video that you could find in the link in the description below. But we are now in the section that's titled Building Our Heading and Footer with Strapi and Next.js. And we're going to start by setting up our content types in our Strapi application. So back in our Strapi application, inside the Content Type Builder, we're going to create a new single type, and this is going to be responsible for our global data, which is going to include our header and footer. And so I'm going to go ahead and call it global. Let's click continue. And we're going to start by adding a text field, which is going to be our title that we could use for meta description. Let's click add another field. It's also going to be text. We're going to use long text, and that's going to be a description. Let's click finish. And now we have our basic global page. And we want our global page be responsible for our header and footer data. So let's go ahead and create our header component. Again, we could either go create new component here called header, or we could click on add another field, scroll to the bottom and click on this components button. And we're going to go ahead and call it header. And we're going to add it to our layout. And let's go click on configure our component. So let's call this header and it's going to be a single component. And let's add our first field to our component. Our first field is going to be a link. So let's click on components. Let's click use existing component. Let's select a component and we're going to reuse our link element. And we're going to call this logo text. It's going to be a single component. And this is going to be responsible for our website name. Now let's click add another field. Again, we're going to select a component and our top navigation is going to have a call to action. So let's use our link again. So selecting a component, we're going to call it a link. It's going to be a single component and we're going to call it CTA button. And now let's click on finish. And as you could see here, our homepage has a header and the header has a logo text, which is a link and call to action button. And if we take a look at this UI here, we could see that we have our logo text and our CTA button. And that's exactly what we're demonstrating here with this strappy content type. Now that we have our header, let's go ahead and create our footer. I'm going to click again, add another field to the single type. We're going to scroll to the components and we're going to call it footer. Let's add it under layouts and configure our component. Taking a look at our footer, we're going to have our logo text. We're going to have text for our copy in the middle, and then we're going to have social icons or social links. So let's see how we could re represent them in Strapi. So our footer is going to be a single component. So now let's add first fields to this component. Again, we're going to reuse our link component. So let's click on component. We're going, to, we're going to use existing component. Let's select our component. Again, we're going to reuse our link. And this is going to be our, our logo text. And it's going to be a single component. Now let's add another component, which is going to be regular text. We're going to keep it short text. And we're just going to call it text. And this is responsible for this middle text in our footer. And finally, let's add our social links. So we're going to click add another field. It's going to be a component. We're going to select use existing component. We're going to navigate to our selected components and select our link. And the name, it's going to be social link. And it's going to be a repeatable component because we're going to have multiple social links. So now go ahead and click finish. And if we scroll down, we could see that we have a way to represent our footer data by our logo text link, our text, and our social link. So now our global page is done. We'll go ahead and save. 
And before we could take a look how we could get this data from our API, let's navigate to our content manager, go to our global page and add the data. I'm gonna call this global page. And we're gonna say this is a page that is responsible for storing our header and footer data. You could add whatever description you want. You could even add your meta description here for your site if you like to. I'm just gonna keep it simple. And for our header, for our logo text, for our URL, if someone clicks on the link, we want it to take it back home. And the text is going to be, we're gonna keep it original. We're going to say YT summarize. Is it external link? No, it's not. Now we're going to have a call to action button and our and our call to action is going to take us to our sign in page so let's call it sign in and is it external false now let's work on setting up our footer so let's click the add button for our logo text it's going to be a link to our home page we're going to say yt summarize and is it external false our text I'm gonna say made by Paul with love. And let's add our social links. And for social links, you could add your socials, but I'm just going to put HTTPS YouTube.com. Text going to be YouTube. And is it external? Yes, it is. Add another entry. Let's add HTTPS and that's going to be twitter.com and text going to be Twitter is external true. And finally, we're going to add HTTPS at github.com to link to our GitHub. And the text is going to be GitHub. Sounds good and then external true for sure. So now that we created our links for the bottom, let's go ahead and click publish. And so now we have data that represents our header and footer. So finally, let's go ahead, create these components in our Next.js application so we could go ahead and render this data. But first, we wanna make sure that we give our API permissions to be able to get this data from our Strapi endpoint. So let's navigate to settings. Under roles, we're gonna go public. And under globals page, we're going to select find permission and now we're able to make a get request to our API slash global to get our data. Make sure you go ahead and save. Now in our Next.js application, let's navigate to our data loaders and we're going to create a new loader that's going to be responsible to get this data from Strapi. We're going to say export a sync function and it's going to be called get global data and we're going to reference our URL, which is going to be our strappy URL plus the path API global. Now we wanna add our query params using QS stringify. And here we're gonna populate our fields. We're gonna say populate and we could pass on, instead of an object, we could pass on array. If we take a look inside of our Strap application, we have a header, which has a logo text component, has a CTA button component. We also have the same thing in footer, our logo text component. Our text is top level field, so we don't have to specify it. And then here we have our social link. So we could literally reference this by doing the following. Here we could say header.logo text then header.cta button, then we're gonna do footer logo text, and then we are going to do footer.social link. And finally, here we're just gonna return, calling our fetch data function, passing the URL that's gonna include all of our query params. Fantastic. And in terms of where do we wanna get this data, since this is gonna live in our top navigation or our footer, we could, get this data inside our layout.tsx file. So let's go ahead and do that. In layout.tsx file, currently we don't have a header or footer component here. We could go ahead and import our get global data from our data loaders. We could make the root layout as a sync 
function. And then inside our root layout function, we could call our global data. And for now, we're just gonna go ahead and console log to make sure that we're able to get our global data. So making sure that your application is running, you could go ahead and restart. And here you could see that we're getting our global data, including our header data and our footer data. Now that we know that our API works, let's go ahead and create our appropriate components so we could render this to the page. To keep this process easy, we are going to reference our blog post where I already provided the code snippets. So navigating to our section that says building our header in XJS, you're going to see the code. So the first component we're gonna create is our logo.tsx component that's gonna have our SVG and create our logo text. Go ahead and copy the code snippet inside your Next.js application in the components folder, custom. Inside the custom folder, create a new file called logo.tsx and paste in the code. And it's just basic React code and we have a link component with a mountain icon that we have. And inside here, we're going to just pass the name of our website as a prop. Now that we have this, we could move on to building our header component. So if you scroll down in the notes here, we're going to see the code snippet for our header.tsx component. So go ahead and copy inside your Next.js application, go ahead in your components folder or in their customs, create a new file called header.tsx and paste in the following code. And again, we wanna make sure that we import our custom logo. And because I called it logo with the little L, that's what we're going to make sure we are doing. So perfect. Now that we have our header, we could go ahead and use it. So let's navigate back to our layout before importing our header. We know that our response, we return our header and footer. So here we could say if no global data, return null, and then we could destructure our header and footer from our data. So now let's go ahead and import our header component and pass our data. So now back in our website, you could see that we have our top navigation with our header, with our data coming from Strapi. We have our logo text and our call to action button. So now let's go ahead and add the footer, which you could find in our notes. So navigating to our code snippet for our footer, go ahead and copy. So now inside our components folder in our custom, let's create a new file called footer.tsx and go ahead, paste the code from our previous code snippet. Just a little call out in the blog post, I had this spelled with a capital L. I might've already fixed it, but it should be small L because that's what we reference our logo component as you could see here. But if you're wondering, that's what that is. Now let's navigate back to our layout. And here we're going to import our footer. If it doesn't auto import it for you, go ahead and import it manually. Now that we have our footer and we're passing our footer data, if we navigate back to our website and scroll down, boom, we have our footer with all of our awesome information. And what's cool, this is dynamic because this is living in our Strap application so that anytime you can go back to your Strap application and change any of the items that you want, including made by Paul with love. Maybe I will say made by Paul with love for you. And I love how awesome using Strapi is because you're able to easily make these changes. So now if I refresh, boom, we see our message here on the bottom. Taking a look back in our Strap application, we do have our global page has our title and description. And maybe this is our meta title and meta description that we wanna use on our website. So let's take a look how we could accomplish this in Next.js. So back in our code in our layout.tsx file, if I scroll up right now, we are hard coding our metadata. And this is why you see create next app and for as a title and our description is generated by create next step. And the title is what you see here in the tag. What if we wanna make it dynamic to be populated by our data that we find here from Strapi? And maybe we could change this to the title called YT Summarize and that's what we're gonna show. And if I click publish and save, 
Currently, this is not reflected here because as we mentioned before, this is statically being set in Next.js using the metadata const. So let's update this right now. So using our blog post as a guide, we wanna make sure that we, number one, getting our global data, and let's create a separate loader specifically to get that global data for our page. I'm gonna go ahead, copy the snippet, and inside our data loaders.tsx file, right after get global data, let's go ahead and paste it in. So we can use the same get global data because we do get access to the title and description, but we are asking to return that extra data for our header and footer. So why not make just a call to our get global page API and get just the title and description. But I wanted to show you that you can in Strapi just make a call and only say, hey, I want to return just the title and the description and nothing else. So now in our layout.tsx file, let's import get global page metadata and we're going to use it. But instead of using const metadata to define our metadata, we're gonna keep this here as the default and we're not gonna export it. And in Next.js, we are able to use generate metadata function. So we're gonna say export uh, sync and it's going to be a function that is called generate metadata. And it's going to take a promise of metadata and here we're going to say const global page metadata. We're going to await our get global page metadata function. Then we're going to check if there's no global page metadata, meaning that we didn't set it on Strapi. We're going to return the default. Otherwise, let's return the title, which is going to be global page metadata data title or and the description which is gonna be global page metadata, a data dot description. So now if we refresh our application, instead of seeing our default, we should see YT summarize, and that's because that's what we have here. So if I do YT summarize home and publish, and we refresh, notice we have that reflected in the top here. Awesome. So now if we go to sign in, Notice that we get 404 because that page doesn't exist. So let's take a look how we could gracefully handle this by creating a 404 page. In the blog post, I already have a snippet, but we're going to create a page called notfound.tsx. And let's go ahead and copy the code example for this not found page. Once you do, inside the app of your folder in the root, Let's create a new file and we're going to call it not found dot tsx. And let's go ahead and paste our React code for our not found page. This is complaining here because, like I said, I'm using error lens that is very temperamental. It expects me to say read only, uh, but I don't think you really have to do that. So now that we have our not found page, and we try to navigate to a page that doesn't exist. So if I just type a bunch of random stuff, boom, we're going to have, oops, this page has left the building, which is our new, much nicer, not found page. We could argue if this is much nicer, but now that you know that you need to create a not found page, you could style it or create it in the way that you want. If you click go back, it's just gonna redirect us back to our previous URL, which is awesome. Now, when we navigate from page to page, Maybe we want to have a loader. You could do this either in the loading.tsx file or use suspense. You could read more about it on Next.js documentation. But just because this is one common use case that beginners should know, you could create a loading.tsx file that is going to render when something is loading. So let's go ahead and do that. So now let's go ahead and create our loading page. So inside the app directory, we're going to create a new file. It's going to be called loading.tsx. And we're going to paste in our code snippet for our basic loader. It basically is going to show a gray light background with a circular spinner in the middle. So now that we have that, let's give it a try. So if I go back to summarize, 
Did you see that beautiful loader? If I try to go back to sign in, we obviously gonna hit our not found page. If we go back, we see our beautiful loader. And the last thing I wanna show you is let's navigate back to our page.tsx file where we are making a get homepage data request. And so let's go to our loaders and let's say in get homepage data, let's say there's a mistake somewhere that breaks our app. We got this error that something went wrong. Maybe we wanna handle this a little bit more gracefully by creating a default error page to kind of show our user that something broke without being this scary looking. And Next.js makes this really easy. We could create an error page by creating a file called error.ts and it has to be a client component. So that's why we use use client here, but let's go ahead and copy the code snippet in the root of our application inside app. Let's create a new file called error.tsx and we're gonna go ahead and paste in our error page and you could learn more about error pages inside Next.js. Of course, error lens is gonna complain because it doesn't like the name I'm using, but you know what? I'm just gonna keep it the way it is because it's perfectly fine. So now when we navigate back to our website, you notice that we have a much nicer error page, which is awesome. So our project is coming together. We're pretty much done with our homepage, at least the basics of it. You're more than welcome to customize it as you want. And we learned how in Strapi, we are able to create and represent our homepage data and the concept of dynamic zones via blocks and how we are able to dynamically render the hero section, including the features. We also took a look how to create our top navigation, our bottom navigation, how to handle errors, loading state, and our not found page when we redirect to sign in. And so in the next section, in the part four of the series, we're gonna take a look how to create our sign in and sign up component and how to use Next.js server actions to submit forms with some server side validation using Zod. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask them in the comments below, but I always hang out Monday through Friday at least 12.30 p.m. CSD time at Strappy's Discord's open office hours. So you wanna talk live, stop on by and say hello. But with that being said, I'll see you in the next lesson, which hopefully is gonna be out tomorrow, hopefully, or the day after. Bye everybody.